How many of you know or knew someone who fought in World War II? All right. Anybody here who themselves fought in World War II? My grandfather, my grandpa Binkley, was in the Pacific Theater in the U.S. Navy Air. It's my estima estimation that no other war in all of history has included as many countries and has had so much involvement by every branch of military service. Some wars seem to be mostly air wars more recently, or land or sea wars, but World War II was an all-out air, land, and sea war. Victory at Sea is a documentary television series about warfare in general during World War II and naval war warfare in particular. The project was conceived by Henry Solomon, who was a new U.S. Navy lieutenant commander during World War II. The, uh, NBC approved the project in 1951 with Salomon as producer and a budget of $500,000, which was large for that time period. His team searched naval archives around the world and received complete cooperation from the U.S. Navy, which recognized the publicity value of the project. And Salomon's team compiled 60 million feet of film. You young people, I don't know how many gigabytes that is of video. <laughs> But it was 60 million feet of film, and that was edited down to 61,000 feet that was used for the broadcast. The original TV broadcast comprised 26 half-hour segments, Sunday afternoons at 3 p.m. Eastern, starting October 26, 1952, and ending on May 3, 1953. NBC then created a feature length 89-minute motion picture condensation in 1954, which was narrated by Alexander Scorby, who replaced Leonard Graves, who was the narrator for the 26-part series. By 1964, the syndicated, by 1964, the syndicated series had been broadcast in 40 foreign markets. The TV series won many honors, including the Emmy and Peabody Awards. Now, some knowledgeable viewers of the time period criticized the editing for, uh, this is your word for the night, anachronistic sequences. I think that means they're out of chronology. For example, some ships and aircrafts of the 1943 to 45 vintage are shown doing things in 1941 and 42. We wouldn't recognize that, but those that were there would know. Our symphonic scenario, which we'll be performing, will have some parts out of chronological order also. Um, Solomon signed Richard Rodgers, who was a very famous uh, Broadway composer, to compose the musical score. He contributed 12 themes a minute or two in length, and then Robert Russell Bennett did the orchestrating, uh, transforming those themes for a variety of moods and then composing much more original material even than Rodgers did to begin with. For example, episode number 18 is entirely Bennett's creation and uses none of Rogers' 12 themes. Um, but Bennett um, only received credit for arranging the score and conducting the NBC Symphony Orchestra members on the soundtrack recording sessions. This is not the NBC, regardless of what the pastor from Florida says, the, I don't have Chicago Symphony or NBC Orchestra members snuck in here. Um, Excerpts from the music soundtrack were re-recorded and sold as record albums, and in 1954, Rogers did record the Victory at Sea symphonic scenario medley that was scored by Bennett with the New York Philharmonic for Columbia Records. We have really had a very enjoyable time learning this music and then learning how to match it up with the film footage, and I hope you enjoy it also.